Hello, and welcome to the uh, review for exam three in lab. Uh, these slides are going to be the endocrine slides that you need to know, and I'm going to do a different presentation for the reproductive slides. Uh, so let's go ahead and start. This first slide is of the thyroid gland, and I'm not going to cover very many of the aspects of hormones, what they do, uh, and their stimulus for release or anything like that. That will come from the chart that you need to fill out. Right now, I'm just going to go over the major points for each of the slides that you'll need to know. On the thyroid gland, there's going to be uh, these large kind of round structures, and then there are going to be the parts that are not within those round structures. So those are our two major regions. The round structures are the thyroid follicles. And this is where those T3, T4, collectively called the thyroid hormone, are made. Uh, and we have two parts. We have the cells that make essentially the wall of the thyroid follicle. This is simple cuboidal epithelium. And then we have all the liquid that's inside, and that is called colloid. Um, anything that is not a part of those thyroid follicles, these cells that are kind of in between, these are either called C cells or parafollicular cells. And that is where calcitonin is made. Remember, calcitonin, we talked about a little bit in 137. That's one of those hormones that's involved in calcium maintenance. So on this slide, you'll need to know thyroid follicle, the entire structure. The edge is made of simple cuboidal epithelium. The inside is filled with colloid and then between the thyroid follicles, we've got either parafollicular cells or C cells. You'll need to know for the exam what slide this is that you're looking at, each of those structures that we just covered, what hormones are made at each of those regions, and disorders associated with either hypo or hyper secretion by those particular structures. Okay, so now we've moved to the next slide. This is the pancreas. And this is kind of a weird organ. It's an endocrine organ, but it's also a digestive organ or an exocrine gland. So all of the other endocrine slides that we're looking at are going to be just endocrine in function, but the pancreas is actually endocrine and exocrine both. There's going to be a couple of different structures on here that you'll need to know. These kind of open, mostly white areas. These are pancreatic ducts. This is something that we talked about a little bit previously in digestive. Uh, when, the, when the pancreas is adding its digestive enzymes into the digestive tract, it travels through this pancreatic duct. Well, those enzymes have to be made in the pancreas, and the majority of what we're looking at here, these dark, dark pink, almost purple cells that are almost the entire structure here, are called acini cells. And acini cells make the digestive enzymes that the pancreas secretes. But scattered throughout the acini cells are lighter pink areas. And these are the islets of Langerhans. These are the endocrine portion of the pancreas. And the islets of Langerhans, uh, even though we can't tell visually looking at them, there are two different cell types. There are something called alpha cells and others called beta cells. The alpha cells make something, uh, a hormone called glucagon. 
and the beta cells make the hormone that practically everyone's heard of, insulin. So those are the two hormones that are involved uh, chiefly in uh, maintaining your blood glucose levels. And on this slide, they could ask you, what organ is it? They could ask you, is it endocrine or exocrine? Remember, it's both. They could ask you any of the structures that we've just covered. Acini cells, pancreatic duct, islet of Langerhans. And they could ask you what is made at each region. Acini cells make those digestive enzymes. Islets of Langerhans make insulin and glucagon. They could also ask you for the islet of Langerhans, what is a disorder associated with either hypo or hyper secretion of the hormones. Now we've moved to the pituitary gland. Uh, this is actually kind of a, a unique gland in that it's two separate structures uh, derived from two completely different tissue types. Uh, we can see looking at it that the two areas visually look quite different. Um, this lighter area here is the posterior pituitary, uh, also called the neurohypophysis. The hypophysis is just another name for pituitary. The neurohypophysis, or posterior pituitary, is actually neural tissue. It's, it's nervous tissue that comes down from the hypothalamus. The anterior pituitary, or adenohypophysis, is actually uh, glandular tissue that um, during development actually forms by breaking off from the salivary glands. Um, but here collectively it is the pituitary gland. The posterior pituitary is going to be responsible for secreting two hormones, ADH and oxytocin. Now, when we're asking questions about this, you have to be very careful. Uh, make sure you read what the question's asking. The posterior pituitary is unique in that it does not make any of the hormones that it secretes. The hypothalamus makes ADH and makes oxytocin. And then those hormones travel down the axons of some neurons and are stored in the posterior pituitary where those axons end. So if the question asks what hormones are made by the posterior pituitary, actually the answer is none. If the question instead asks what hormones are secreted by the posterior pituitary, that would be either ADH or oxytocin. When we look at instead the anterior pituitary, it can make its own hormones, and it makes quite a few. Uh, you'll need to know uh, follicle-stimulating hormone, FSH, luteinizing hormone, LH, thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH, prolactin, PRL, and growth hormone, GH. So collectively, the pituitary gland makes a lot of hormones, but they're all made in the anterior. The posterior does not make any of them. Um, there is another structure that we can't really see on this slide. It would come from this posterior region right here. It's a stalk that would connect to the hypothalamus. And that stalk is called the infundibulum. And the infundibulum is mostly uh, more of those axons that travel from the hypothalamus into the posterior pituitary. Now, this slide is the one that practically everyone really stresses over. And it's, it's really not that bad if you know what what to look for, but just looking at it initially, it can be really intimidating. This is the uh, 
uh, adrenal gland. And looking at it, you can see that there are obviously different regions on this gland. And each one of these regions is going to have a different function and secrete a different hormone. The way that I approach this is not going just simply from outside, which is up here, and going deeper. I actually try to look here and there and pick out the areas that I think are the most different and then go from that point. I'll explain what that means as we go here. Well, up here at the top, where the adrenal gland actually begins, this area right here is called the capsule. And the capsule is, is not endocrine in function. It's just kind of a protective connective tissue layer. So knock this out just by saying capsule. You don't have to worry about function. You don't have to worry about what it produces. But down here, I think, is probably the most obvious area. It's got these big open gaps. Well, this area is the, the adrenal medulla. Adrenal medulla produces the epinephrine that we've talked about all semester. Uh, this is a big part of your uh, sympathetic nervous system. Remember that fight-or-flight response. But the, the adrenal medulla ends right here. And we can see we've got a dark pink right above it. We've got a light pink. And then we've got an area right here that kind of looks like it's almost bubbly, I think. So those three areas make up the adrenal cortex. Now, this is probably the most confusing part because there's a lot that goes on in the adrenal cortex, and each layer has its own name. So, I'm going to draw some lines here to help us separate each layer. Here we said was, above this line, the capsule. Below this line is the medulla. But between these lines is the cortex. Now, if we look at the cortex, we can see right here and right here, there are some obvious divisions. Now, this area near the capsule is called the zona glomerulosa. And now you, that, that should probably sound familiar because recently we've talked about the glomerulus in the kidneys. Well, glomerulus really is just a word that means ball or sphere. And if we look really, really close at this region, these bubbles are kind of sphere-like or ball-like. And that's how it derives its name. Next, we've got this area here, which is called the zona fasciculata. And below that, a really, really dark region called the zona reticularis. And those are some confusing names, but something that's now pointed out here is GFR. And that's a phrase that you recently used in the kidney chapter. So if you can remember GFR from kidneys, then just remember GFR for the adrenal cortex. Zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis make up the adrenal cortex. Below that, the adrenal medulla. Well, in addition to knowing the layers of the cortex, you'll need to know what is made at each layer. And if we can remember, salt, sugar, 
sex in that order, then we can kind of piece out what is made at each layer. Well, when we talk salt, all this semester we have talked about one of the hormones that moves sodium in the kidney. Do you remember what that was? That was aldosterone. Moving down to the next level, we've got the zona fasciculata, and we've got sugar. Well, one of the hormones involved in sugar metabolism is cortisol. Cortisol is made at the zona fasciculata. And down here in the zona reticularis, sex, well, the sex hormones, or the androgens, testosterone and estrogen. Well, you remember mostly testosterone is made in the testes, but what about in females who don't have testes? The testosterone has to come from somewhere. Well, that's where the zona reticularis comes in. Estrogen in males and the primary source of estrogen in postmenopausal females is also going to be the zona reticularis. So there's really a lot going on on this slide, but break it down, find the capsule on the outside, the medulla really obvious on the inside, and then in the middle we've got the cortex, and you can see they are obviously quite different. Just know them in order. GFR, salt, sugar, sex. Once you've got that down, then use your chart to think about what are some of the disorders associated with hyper or hyposecretion. What is the stimulus associated with release of these hormones? We can really get a lot from that one chart. I hope this helped, and I will have another uh, slideshow soon with the reproductive slides.